The research paper. A classic. Centuries year old technology that has survived the modern era. This paper is called Algorithms for Boolean Matrix Factorization in Integer Programming. And this is an operations research paper based on a code base. What I think about today is a system that goes from a code base to a research paper. And a number of you have submitted to me your code bases. And so I am going to present research papers <laughs> generated during this hackathon. Uh, so Han actually, uh, you can see him here in the slot. He actually um, had a big reaction. Uh, he said, uh, to create a Pandas AI paper. Uh, that's amazing. Ha 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 Okay, let's see what he's looking at. Uh, this is from a code base. So he has this uh, Pandas AI code base from G Venturi. And if we take a quick look at this GitHub, uh, quick look at this GitHub. <laughs> Please hurry up, Sanchez. Right, uh, you have to take for granted that there is, in fact, a Pandas AI code base. Um, yeah, it seems like it's like. Uh, I'll just open this in. Uh... Right, uh, so, yeah, basically. Conversational data frames. Making data analysis accessible through natural language process. I'll give you a quick skim, the introduction, the related work, the approach, smart data frame, a conversational interface for data frames, implementation details, the smart data frame class, utilizing a fine tuned GP3 model. Uh, caching, customizable prompts, middleware hooks, <laughs> code base architecture limitations, integration with language models, evaluation, efficiency of code generation and expertise, user experience, participants' ratings from one to five, their evaluation, uh, discussion, conclusion, acknowledgments, and an elaborate section of references. Uh, all four, uh, this Pandas AI. So Pandas AI is a Python library that adds generative AI capabilities to Pandas, the popular data analysis manipulation tool. And um, so yeah, I guess you know, uh, what we did is recursively traversed this entire code base. We pulled out uh, every single file of a particular subset of types. So, uh, and um, basically I have a code base prompt. The prompt says uh, code base code. <laughs> so, so <laughs> Quad really loves these like XML tags. Um, and then I inject the code base with this percent %s, and then I end code base code. And I say, extract all of the interesting information and novel insights from this code base, and summarize them in the abstract of a high quality research paper written based on the code base. And I enter the compile string. And Claude comes back to me, a, here's a possible abstract for a research paper based on the provided code base. Uh, developing conversational data frames and exploratory code base. Data frames in Python, such as pandas and polders, have become essential tools for data analysis. However, current data frames, blah, 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 notable implementation details, modular design, uh, automatic code correction, retry and execution errors, multi-data frame support, smart data lake aggregation, configurable caching, logging, visualization, etc. All of this from the raw code of that uh, code base. And then I write a ton of code that uh, generates a research paper procedurally based on uh, the code base in question. And um, I pump it through uh, a like, LaTeX generator, and I run PDF LaTeX, and uh, out pops a research paper. <laughs> so this is the paper written super, super long. Um, and yeah, eventually, uh, we just write uh, to a text file, which gets compiled into a PDF, which gets uh, sent to you in like three minutes. Um, I present code based paper. Woo! So, yeah, there are two people in the crowd who are some uh, customers. I guess I wonder, are they happy customers? Would you like to say something about your papers? Yes. Uh, it's better than the one we wrote, so. Yeah. <laughs> say it, louder. It's much better than the one we wrote. Much better than the, <laughs> much better than the one they wrote. Okay. And, um, yeah, I guess, uh, how do you get around? Peter that. Um, cool. So, yeah, some happy customers. Um, the part that I was really the, like, uh, code-based processing. 
And I had some paper done code from strings, so the idea is you know, code base to description to research paper. And so, um, yeah, we'll put it up online. So if you ever want to write a research paper based on every hackathon project you've ever had, you can pump out every single research paper, put your name on all of them, and be one of the most prolific authors ever. Questions, questions. Yeah, what's going on in the code base analysis? So like you said code base to description. Are you actually looking at like the files themselves or what are you kind of taking from the yes. code base? Uh, so I, everything. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I am. Just, just launch out at all. <laughs> yeah, uh, so to be super clear. Um, Gotta love Claude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, we grab the full text of every Python file, every JavaScript file, every C++ file, um, and put it in what's called compile string. And I can even show you a print, do you want to see a printout? Sure. Um, so, uh, code base prompt. This is what Claude sees. Wow. Oh, I thought I'm short. <laughs> yeah, Code's it's not long, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but basically, yeah, it seems like it's in uh, all the params. Uh, yeah. And this is just a recursive traversal of the uh, directory structure with file extension choices. And uh, yeah, it actually just um, uses file memory. Uh, if you were to take it further, like, how do you evaluate good paper from code base? Like, what would be the next steps you would want to see from you? Um, yeah, honestly, I think the, um, yeah, the cool thing that I wanted to do that I didn't, I guess, Kyle, if you could stop. Um, the really cool thing that I wanted to do that I didn't is I execute the code. So yeah, I guess I feel kind of bad. So it's code gen, and this is like vaguely code gen adjacent. But I didn't actually get anything done with that. Um, what I should have done was run the code uh, in a environment from the code base and used the output of the code with a variation on the inputs that is also generated in um, you know a kind of well, sort of like stochastic generation methodology to see what the outputs of the code base are for various inputs, and then use the input-output sets to write the paper, um, and then generate evaluation metrics, and then create evaluation code for the code base, and then use that evaluation in the paper instead of hallucinating results, which is basically, I think, that way. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's what I think. Are you generating graphs? I, I can generate graphs, but I'm currently not. So there's a code interpreter API. Uh, yeah, Jesse did this job a PhD, actually. Uh, you have to have a um, the, Yeah, there's no way, there's no reason not to do like code interpreter style uh, analysis of the outputs of the uh, code. It's just, I'm not running the code right now, and so I'm not generating a data set with which to generate graphs. And so, um, yeah, it's not there. Cool. Uh, I think that's my time. Thank you.